Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. The kingdom of darkness do not want the people of the Most High to overcome racism, division, discrimination, poverty, and misinformation. The beast system thrive off lawlessness and the people's dysfunctions. If the people of the Most High is serving their Elohim in the spirit and in truth, the kingdom of darkness has lost the battle. The synagogue of Satan used the beast culture to make it difficult for the people of the Most High to serve their Elohim. The workers of iniquity are interfering in all areas of the indigenous black people's lives. The synagogue of Satan is trying to prevent the indigenous black people from getting along and moving forward. They want the indigenous people to continue to fight to remain divided. The synagogue of Satan know there is power in division. Yeshua said to the Pharisees who accused him of casting out devils by sorcery, a kingdom or household that is divided cannot stand. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Yeshua went on to say to the Pharisees, If Satan casts out Satan, how could his kingdom stand? Division would destroy a home and country. That is why the word of the Most High said, a nation or a household that is divided cannot stand. This is a critical lesson the indigenous black people need to learn. From the beginning, the indigenous black people have a hard time getting along. From Cain killing his brother Abel to Joseph brothers conspiring to kill him and eventually selling him into slavery. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Until this day, the indigenous black people cannot seem to understand that division destroy a nation and household. The indigenous black people's communities are a living proof of what the spirit of division can do to a household and country. It is time for the indigenous black people to wake up. Many indigenous black people profess to being spiritual and having a personal relationship with the Most High. Somehow they are blind to the devices the kingdom of darkness use against them. The scriptures are correct when they say only a remnant will return to serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. It is important for the remnant not to let the decisions of the majority to influence them to deviate from the path the Most High made to save your life. The scriptures made it clear that what is popular with the world is an abomination with the Most High. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Just because the majority are following popular trends, this does not give the remnant permission to follow. Remember, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are on that road. My role is to help the remnant stay on the narrow road that leads to life. 
it is extremely important that you do not let the B system take a leadership position in your life. Let the Most High lead you. The scriptures inform us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Most High. Israelites, let the Most High be delighted in your ways. Do not let the B system order your steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Let the people who made the decision to stay on the broad road enjoy their ride. The remnant will continue to focus on the Most High. Israelites, just because you have made the decision to follow the Most High and not the beast culture, your decision does not exempt you from attacks by the kingdom of darkness. Matter of fact, because you made the decision to follow the Most High, the kingdom of darkness will increase the attacks against you. You have become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, Satan will look for ways to distract you to get you off the narrow road that leads to life. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Satan will send his disciples to confuse you and influence you to follow his ways. Make sure you are rooted in the Most High. Just because it is the awakening, this does not conclude the kingdom of darkness will not find ways to contaminate the awakening. It is up to the remnant to not allow themselves to be carried away with misinformation. Race is a hot topic the beast system does not want anyone discussing. The only time it is permitted to discuss race is if your ideology support the beast system's views on race. Any opinions outside of the beast system on race is unacceptable. Even if your findings are supported by scripture, history, and hardcore evidence, the synagogue of Satan would label your findings, conspiracy theories, and controversial. The kingdom of darkness used race as a stronghold in the beast system. Race classification inflict a superior or inferior complex on the people who don't understand the synagogue of Satan's motives behind race. The Most High did not create race. The kingdom of darkness invented race. The Most High made two humans in his image and likeness. From the two humans came the other groups of homo sapiens living today. The Most High did not create any other species of mankind outside of the people he made in his image and likeness. Therefore, there is no need to classify the people by race. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. If there were more than one race in this world, then there would be a need to differentiate the different race. However, the Most High created one manner of people. The people the Most High made in His image, He referred to them as humans. The scriptures gave an account of the Most High's creation in the book of Genesis. Yah made Adam and Eve, the first humans. The Most High did not create another group of people after He created Adam and Eve. The Most High created the angels, the animals, and Adam and Eve. The scriptures revealed the Most High made the humans a little lower than the angels. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. It is important for the people to know who the humans are. The reason being, there are more than one species of mankind. The scriptures identify one other species of mankind. The other species of mankind are the giants the scriptures spoke of. The giants are half human and half angel. Their mothers, the sirens, are the daughters of men, and the fathers to the giants are the watchers. And it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw, the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Although the Most High created the angels and the humans, the children that came from the abominable union between the daughters of men and the watchers are not of the Most High. The half-angel and half-human hybrids, the seed of the fallen, are the only other groups of mankind the scriptures recognize. 
The offspring of the watchers cannot be classified as humans. They are a new species. The beast system acknowledged there are more than one species of mankind. However, they claim to not know the origin of the other species of mankind. Somehow they can tell the indigenous people who they are and where they come from, but they cannot tell us the origin to the other species of mankind, even though they carry the hybrid species DNA. Seems to me they need to conduct more research on who they are than the indigenous people. There is one group of people living today that are pure humans. They are the group of people the beast system labeled black. Everyone else have DNA that links them to the other species of mankind. The beast system called them Neanderthals. The Bible referred to them as Nephthalims. The giants had children of their own. Those children are known as the Eljo. For more in-depth information on the other species of mankind, watch the Seed of the Fallen's playlist on this channel. Race is based on appearance and place of birth. The synagogue of Satan used race to identify the people living today. Only mankind used appearance to identify a person. The Most High used bloodline. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. There are no scriptures in the Bible that show the Most High using race, a person's appearance, to identify the people he created. The Most High don't use appearance because the indigenous people resemble each other. That is why in the beast system, all black people are placed into the black race, regardless of bloodline. You can find genealogy to the various tribes in the scriptures by the progenitor of the bloodline, the fathers. You will not find the most high identifying an entire bloodline based on appearance. The kingdom of darkness race system is based on appearance in place of birth. I don't understand why some heathens get offended when we talk about the Israelites' race according to the beast system race structuring. The heathens are content with the race labels the beast system place on them. When we use the same methods to expose the deception, it becomes racism. They will ignore the group of Jews who are benefiting from the Israelite culture. The imposters' claims to the Israelite bloodline is solely on race. They deny the indigenous black people the Israelite heritage solely on race. Make it make sense. The people cannot comprehend that the Israelite heritage is not a religion because the kingdom of darkness blur the line between race and religion. The Israelite heritage is not a religion. The synagogue of Satan made it about religion to deceive the world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In the Israelite culture, everyone inherit their portions based on their father's tribe. There are 12 tribes in the Israelite bloodline. Each tribe had their own inheritance. There were no commingling inheritance among the 12 tribes. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe. But every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. When it comes to bloodline, it does not matter where you are born. The people who are born in the same bloodline will share DNA that link them to the progenitor of the bloodline. For example, black people are the humans the Most High made in his image. Their DNA will link them back to Adam and Eve, the progenitors to the human bloodlines. While the other species of mankind share DNA that link them to the hybrid species, the Neanderthals, also known as the seed of the fallen. Because black people do not come from the bloodline of the seed of the fallen, they do not have Neanderthal DNA. Your DNA will reveal who you are. The beast system used DNA to determine if a man fathered a child. The beast system never used appearance to determine if a man fathered a child. I am not sure why the synagogue of Satan believe appearance is sufficient to identify a person's race in the beast system. 
The synagogue of Satan used race instead of bloodline because they know the light to all flesh is in the blood. What a better way to deny the indigenous people of their inheritance if you do not recognize bloodline. You can't refute the truth when it is written in their DNA. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. What is it about the topic of race that made this subject controversial? I believe the synagogue of Satan do not want the indigenous people to know their identity because once they know who they are, they can reclaim what belonged to them. Once the people know they are Shematic, Hematic, or Japhatic, they can return to their heritage. By returning to their culture heritage, they can serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Once you know how to serve the Most High, you can tap into the power the Most High gave to his people to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because the kingdom of darkness know what could happen if the indigenous black people know their origins, Satan blur the line between race nationality, ethnicity, and religion to confuse the masses. If a person do not know their bloodline, how do they know the inheritance given to them based on their bloodline? Remember, the Most High divided the earth into lots, giving the sons of Noah certain regions of this world for inheritance. Ham inherited the south regions of this world, Shem inherited the middle regions of this world, and Japheth inherited the northern regions of this world. The land distribution to Noah's sons are documented by the Most High. It is written in the scriptures and in the books the synagogue of Satan removed from the Bible. There are many indigenous people dwelling in the land they inherited from their fathers. Today, we have one species of people who lay claims to every land on this earth. These people believe they are entitled to all land and have the power to redistribute what the Most High already made perfect. They control who could migrate to what land and who belongs where. If you descend from Shem's bloodline, you should be able to travel to the middle regions of this world without anyone saying you don't belong. Indigenous people all over the world, can you see the problem with being identified by race versus bloodline? The black label does not reveal your bloodline, nor does it disclose the inheritance that you are entitled to. The beast system placed the ham labeled on every black person to confine the indigenous black people to Africa only. The Most High gave the indigenous black people dominion over the earth. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Today, the synagogue of Satan acknowledged the portion of land given to the Israelites by the Most High, the reason being to steal land and to steal the identity of the chosen people. The scriptures warn us that the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. That is exactly what the other species of mankind did all over the world. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The imposters who claim the Israelite identity are the only groups of people who is benefiting from the Most High's land distribution laws. Everyone else must follow the synagogue of Satan's immigration laws. Israelites, can you discern why it was important to the kingdom of darkness to plant tares among the wheat? Can you comprehend how the synagogue of Satan weaponized race? Race is also determined by the place of birth. Increasing the Caucasian population is not the only reason the synagogue of Satan is pushing into racial relationships to bring forth mixed children in the beast culture. The synagogue of Satan used biracial and mixed people to white out regions or nation. The first thing Satan did was plant tares into a dark population to insert his seed all over the world. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat 
and went his way. The seed of the serpent come from the land of the north. That is why the synagogue of Satan made sure to plant his seed everywhere they stole land. Once the mixed and biracial children were born, they continued the cycle of procreating with the Caucasian species, making the quadroon. The quadroon people are the mixed people whose genetic makeup is approximately 75 to 85 percent white. The quadroon is what the scriptures refer to as the third generation. Latin America, North Africa, and Australia have one of the largest population of quadroons. The quadroons are the children of the biracial and mixed people who procreate with a Caucasian person. The quadroons in the Caucasian community are white passing. Many quadroons insert themselves into black spaces to appropriate black culture. They believe they can claim black culture because they have a black great grandparent. The Arabs, Cardi B, Danny Lay, Drake's son, and Meghan Markle's children are a few examples of a quadroon person. Have you ever heard the saying, hiding the black great-grandparent in the closet? Many indigenous people believe the quadroon, depending on their features, would live the black experience in the B system. The indigenous people allow the quadroon to claim black culture. This has always backfired on the indigenous black people. The quadroon can take off the black costume and benefit from white culture. With the quadroon claiming black culture is how a region or nation become whited out. By the fourth generation, the child of the quadroon is a full-blooded Caucasian. I hope the indigenous people are beginning to see clearer of why they should not procreate with non-indigenous people. The beast system used the quadroons of the world to steal the indigenous people's identity. The workers of iniquity will use a picture of a quadroon to say they are indigenous to the land. North Africa is a prime example of the synagogue of Satan using the quadroon as the face to the original people of the land. That is how they are claiming Mizraim identity and culture. Everyone know Mizraim is Ham's son who dwell in the land of Ham. The original Mizraim descendants are indigenous black people. That doesn't stop some Caucasian people who are quick to label every black person descendants of Ham claim Mizraim descendants to be Caucasian. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. There are Arabs claiming the Israelite bloodline and they go by the Sephardic Jew label. The Arabs are a part of the Quadrum population. Today, the face to the native Indians in the Americas are quadroons. The beast system labeled them Hispanic or Latino. It is time for the people to know that the indigenous people to every land in this world are black people. The quadroon population is the result of the seed of the fallen procreating with the black indigenous people in the land. The children born from that union continue to procreate with the Caucasian species. The result, the indigenous people of that land was whited out. The Most High has a reason to why he restrict his people from procreating with the people outside of their bloodline. The Most High did not want the Israelites procreating with the other tribes within their bloodline. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best only, to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. It is problematic when the other species of mankind believe they know more about the origins of the original people. In addition to their arrogance, they seem to think their wisdom is factual regardless to what history and scriptures say. It is time for the other species of people who invade the spaces of the indigenous people investigate the origin to the Neanderthal DNA they carry. That should be your primary concern instead of trying to reinforce racist doctrines and spreading misinformation about the indigenous black people. The scripture said the Most High will use the things the synagogue of Satan believed to be foolish to shame them. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The reason it is controversial for an indigenous person such as me to talk about race and bloodlines, when the spirit of the Most High revealed truth, the truth is detrimental to the Caucasian species web of lies about race, ethnicity, and religion. 
They want to label race discussions controversial or hate speech to stop the truth from being revealed. The misinformation they spread about the indigenous people is a cover up to hide their identity. The scripture said the truth would make you free. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It is time for the indigenous people to increase their knowledge, to become free from the bondage the synagogue of Satan has placed on the indigenous people. Everyone know who we are. It's about time for the indigenous people to know the truth about their history and culture heritage. The other species of mankind is not indigenous to any land on the earth, nor did the Most High distribute land to them. That is the reason they had to steal land all over the world. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. If the other species of mankind was indigenous, how come we never heard of their women giving birth to indigenous black children when they mate with their counterpart? It should not be a rare occasion for a Caucasian female to produce indigenous children by a Caucasian male. The Caucasian female cannot give birth to children with features she does not possess. The Most High gave the indigenous black woman he created in his image and likeness the ability to produce children with all features. The indigenous black woman's DNA support this truth. That is how she can be fruitful and multiply to fill the earth just as the Most High command of his people. And God bless them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I will continue to profess their DNA testify against them until the indigenous black people understand this truth. Indigenous black people, you hold the power and the key to stop making your oppressors. The kingdom of darkness made you believe you were inferior to deceive you into procreating with the other species of mankind. They say you are improving your genes. According to DNA, that is a lie. There is nothing good about recessive genes. We live in a world that thrive off melanin. Melanin is extremely important. Educate yourself about melanin. Only a misinformed person would destroy their bloodline by infiltrating their DNA with recessive genes. There is nothing wrong with having important discussions about race and other subjects that has affected the lives of all people globally. Controversial topics are wrong to the people who are being exposed or have something to hide. It is time for the people to embrace hard conversations. How else can we unite as a people if the truth is being buried under generations upon generations of lies? The scripture said, what is done in the dark will come to light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Indigenous people all over the world, do not perish for a lack of knowledge. The words of the Most High should have the final say in your life, not what the kingdom of darkness say about you in the beast system. The biased system we live in welcomes and support their own. The Most High said we do not belong. That is why we are rejected. Sometimes rejection is a good thing. There are two species of people, the human species and the hybrid species. The human species brought forth the many bloodlines the word of the Most High reveal in the Bible. Us. And in fact, the, the Africans who came out from Africa have no evidence of any Neanderthal genes in them. No evidence of admixture. So they're the real pure humans. Homo sapiens. Really, really interesting and it gives you a lot to think about. Remember indigenous people, once you are whited out, you are no longer indigenous. Today, you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As always, let the peace of the Most High be with you. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. 
because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength.